All right, team, today we're gonna to be editing some stop motion videos. And just as a reminder, in case you missed it, I did do a full in-studio tutorial on how we shot these videos. So now we're gonna be using this time to edit them in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I've already gone ahead and created a new project for this and you can see our project name right here. I'm just going to call it three stop motion concepts. And what I want to do first, since this is going to be for three separate videos, is to organize our files so we can keep everything straight. So to do that, I'm going to create separate bins and we're going to use these bins to store not only our individual files for the stop motion videos, but also the separate sequences. So for each bin, I'm going to name it based on the video. So this one is going to be our bar bounce video. And then we'll create another one for our kids bars, which is the clicking one that we did in the studio. And then for this one, we'll call this kombucha. So now we're ready to create our individual sequences. So to do that, you can click this new item icon down here and we'll come on up to sequence. And I usually just give these the exact same name as our bins over here. So for this first one, we'll call our sequence bar bounce. And then I do have some custom presets here for the aspect ratio of the videos. I'm gonna be using my vertical 1080 by 1920 today. And then as far as settings, I just leave everything as the default. This is where you can come in and adjust your frame size if you don't already have custom custom ones created, but now we're ready to click OK. And we can see our new sequence is over here on the left hand side. So I'm just going to drag this up into our bar bounce bin. And now we can go ahead and do the same for the other two. And now let's go ahead and drag our photos in. So I'm just dragging these over from the file explorer. And then if you just hover over top of the bin name, you can see it becomes highlighted and then it will drop them directly into that bin for you. And then we can collapse it right here. So I'm just gonna do the same for the other two now. I just like to expand the one that I'm working on. So let's go ahead and expand our bar bounce and we'll do that one first. Okay, so now we're ready to drag our files into the timeline. I am gonna modify this sequence here by right clicking. We're gonna go back into sequence settings and I actually wanna change this to the vertical four by five aspect ratio. So I'm just gonna change this value here to 1350. Click okay and you can see it has adjusted it here. So now to get our clips into the sequence here, I'm gonna click on the first image here, hold down the shift key, click on the last one and you can see it highlighted all of our files. And then we'll go ahead and drag these over to the V1 track that you see right here. And you can see once I drop these in, we're very zoomed in here and I actually wanna show you guys how to fix this so that each time you drop files into your timeline, it doesn't zoom in automatically like this. So I'm actually gonna delete these files from my timeline. And to fix that, I'm gonna have you come up in here to edit and then we'll go to preferences and then come on down to media. And then if you take a look at this default media scaling section here, by default, this will be set to none. So we wanna change that to set to frame size, click okay. And now watch what happens when we drag our files back into the timeline. They're automatically scaled to the correct resolution. So now we're all set to start editing our video here and we're not gonna be going over any super complex editing techniques within Premiere today. This video is to just really show you guys how we can utilize Premiere to really sell those effects that we were creating when we were actually shooting these in the studio. So let's go ahead and expand our view here so we can see our individual images a little bit more clearly here. I'm just gonna click and drag on our track here to make that more visible. And then let's just scrub through and make sure we've got all of our images in the correct sequence here. And then this last one that we see here, this is the bar that's going to land at the very end of the video. So I'm actually gonna drag this up and out of the way for now. I'm gonna put this on to this up here and then I'm just going to toggle this off so that we can't see it while we're working on the rest of these. Now I like to start by having each image in my timeline the exact same duration, which they are right now, but if you look up here, you can see that this entire video is 37 seconds long, which is way too long for a stop motion video like this. So what I'm gonna do is highlight all of our clips here, and actually we can include this last one too. I'm gonna right click and go to speed duration, and then let's just change this here to four frames for each of them. And that's just kind of personal preference that I use as my starting point when creating a stop 
stop motion and then we can either decrease or increase the duration for each of these as we go along. All right, I'm actually just gonna get rid of this image right now. This is the one where the bar is outside of the wrapper. We're not gonna need this quite yet. So what I wanna do here is we're just gonna play through and see how things are looking now that we've adjusted the duration of each. And I'm gonna turn on this loop playback feature just so that we can see it play through a few times just to kind of see how things are looking. All right, and so in order to really illustrate the effect that we're going for here, I kind of like to imagine that I'm holding a ball in my hand and I'm gonna be tossing it toward the sky. And if you think about this, as you release it, it's going to move quickly at first and then gradually decelerate as it gets further away from your hand. So we kind of wanna do the same thing with our clips here by adjusting the duration of each to sort of mimic that effect of gravity on the bar. So I'm actually gonna change this last image here to be a little bit longer. Let's just set this at six frames to give us a little more wiggle room. And then for these first two here, I'm just going to match these up. These are gonna be moving pretty quickly. So we'll change this to, let's start with one. And then maybe we'll just do one here. We'll change this one to two. And then maybe we have this one set to, we'll do three. And I'm gonna change this one to five. And this is all really just going to depend on personal preference and the look that you're going for. So this is where you can really play around with the duration to see if it's achieving the effect that you want. But let's play this through to see how it's looking so far. And I think that's pretty decent. So now what we want to do is to create the reverse of that by having the bar landing on the surface on the other side of this clip here. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna zoom in on the timeline a little bit more here. And then we just wanna make copies of each of these, but in the reverse order on this side. So to do that, I'm just going to select a clip here. I'm holding the Alt key on my keyboard, and then I'm just gonna click and drag to the other side here. And that makes an exact copy, including copying over that duration that we set it to. So now we can just do the same for these to create the reversal. Now let's play this through and see how we're looking. Okay, so this is where we can now drag in the image where we had our opened bar. So that's gonna be this image here. I'm just gonna drag and drop it into the timeline. Let's shorten that duration a bit. It's a bit excessive. <laughs> and now let's play it through and see how it looks when it lands on the table. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I think the only thing that I would change is to make the entire video move a little bit more quickly. So to do that, I'm actually just going to nest all of these images together. I'm gonna to leave this one out so that we can adjust the duration of that separately, but I'm just going to click and drag to highlight all of these. And then we're gonna right click and let's go to nest and we'll just call this bounce. So now all of these are nested together so that we can impact the speed and duration as a whole. So I'm gonna right click again. Let's go into speed and duration. And here we can gradually increase or decrease the speed by a percentage. So let's just change this to 115 and see what that does for our clip. Go ahead and play that through. That's looking a lot better. I think I want it to go even faster though. So let's jump up to, uh, let's just do 160. And I'm just gonna render this really quick. I think that's looking really good. So now at this point, this is another thing where this would just be personal preference. You could either have the video end here. So if I turn off this loop playback and we just play it through, that's the video and it ends right there. So we could either extend this out and just have this frame last a little bit longer and the video ends there. But what I like to do for an effect like this is I like to have it repeat a few times and then export the final video, having it do this somewhere around three or four times. So I'm just gonna copy everything and then let's just paste that in. We'll start with two more times and let's play that through and see. That was pretty good. And sometimes for the final bounce, in this case, I'll just drag this out to make the final image linger on the screen a bit longer. 
but I think we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and export this and take a look at the final video. All right, team, we're ready to edit our second video here. So I'm gonna come on over to the kids bars sequence. You can see each of our sequences are listed across the top here. So let's switch that over. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop our files into the V1 track on the timeline. You may have noticed I just updated our sequence settings here to make this horizontal. I typically shoot vertical nine by 16 for clients. In this case, since this video is just for the purposes of YouTube, I went ahead and recorded it horizontally. So that's how we're gonna edit this video today. Now of our three videos today, this one is probably the most simple because there's not a whole lot of time manipulation that we need to do to this in order to make the concept look realistic. But let's go ahead and do the same thing that we did for our prior video. I'm just going to change this to, let's start with five or six frames, let's do five, so that everything is nice and even. And then I'm just going to zoom in a bit so we can see everything a little bit better. And now let's just play this through to see how it's looking right now. Okay, so the only thing I would say here is that it's moving a little bit too quickly through each of the movements. So what I want it to do is sort of pause on each of the bar changes, just so that as viewers are watching this video, they have a second to really see what's happening and really absorb what's happening with each bar before it changes to the next. So I'm gonna change the duration of this one. Let's just up this to, we'll do nine. And then this is our other bar change here. This is the second one. So we'll do the same for that. And then finally for our last bar change. So let's play this through. Okay, that's looking great. So see how that just kind of gives the viewer a little bit more time to see what's happening and really notice each of the individual flavor changes. That's exactly what we're going for here. So from here, the only thing that I would say we could do to take this a little bit further is to make the clicking motion happen a little bit faster. And I wanted to mention that if you're recording this particular concept in your studio, you could make this look even more fluid by capturing more images of the movement of the finger here. I just captured one with it lifted in the air and then in the next shot, it was resting on the mouse or clicking the button. So you could capture, I would say three or four really small movements of the finger lifting to make it look more seamless. Um, but that's really just personal preference. So let's go into here and change this one. I want this to move a little bit more quickly. We'll start that at three. And then let's do the same for these two. And now let's play it through again and see how it's looking now. If anything, I think I want to see each bar change sitting on the screen for just a little bit longer. So let's change this to, instead of nine, let's bump this up to 12. And then I'll do the same for these two again. Very good. And let's play it through. We're close. I think I want it longer. <laughs> This should be the last one. We're gonna do 15. Let's take a look. Okay, I think this is looking really great. So once we're happy with our timing of everything, let's go ahead and I'm gonna have this repeat the same way that we did with the other video. So I've copied all of our frames here and I'm just gonna paste it twice, turn off the loop playback, and then let's just extend the duration of our last clip here. And then we'll play it from the beginning. All right, that's looking great. So here is what the final video looks like. All right, we definitely saved the best for last here. So let's collapse this over here. And then I'm gonna come on over to our kombucha sequence and then let's drag and drop our files into the timeline. So I'm gonna adjust our timing here so that we can play it through once just to see how everything is looking so far. It's 
expand this just a little bit more. Okay, it's actually already looking pretty good as is, but I definitely want this tap of the can to move a little bit more quickly. So I think we're gonna have our orange slice speed up just a bit as it gets closer. So let's start that, I would say right here, and maybe we'll do these three frames and have them move a little bit more quickly than the rest. So we'll just change this to three. And then the tap, I want to be even faster than that. So I'm gonna change this. We'll probably either do one or two. Let's start with two. And then as it's backing out of the frame, I would say, let's have that move pretty quickly as well. I'm gonna grab these three. We'll change this to three frames. And then let's do this last one. We'll make it two. So now let's play this through and see how that part is looking. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now we can adjust the timing for the filling of the glass, both with the ice cubes and with the liquid. So when I am capturing the movement of something like ice cubes, I usually like to have this move a little bit slower just to make it look more animated. So let's change the ice cube portion here. And I'm actually going to right click with these three selected and we'll group them together. I know that I'm gonna have each of these be the exact same duration so we can do it that way. And let's just change this to, let's do six. And then with liquid, I like it to move a little bit more quickly so that it looks more seamless as the glass is filling up. So I'm just gonna grab these. I'm not going to include the last one because as we did with the prior two videos, I want this last frame to be on screen for a bit longer, but let's group these together. And then to make it more seamless, we'll set it to move a little bit more quickly. I think two will be a good speed for that. And then we'll just go ahead and extend this out right now. So let's play it through now. I think the liquid is filling up a little bit too quickly for my preference here. So I'm gonna change this from two to three, just to slow it down a bit. But overall, I think this is looking really great. You could play around with the speed of the orange, how slowly or quickly it's coming into the scene here, I think what we have is pretty good, but if you want more of an animated look, you could certainly change this. Let's just test it out and do five, just to slow it down a bit, and it could kind of come in at a slower pace. But I'm gonna undo that. I think I like the quicker one, and then we'll just play this through one more time, make sure we like how it's looking. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So here's the final video for the orange kombucha. You guys are the best and thank you for hanging with me through this one. My goal here was really just to show you that you can create interesting animations just by using really simple editing techniques and adjusting the speed and duration of your clips to achieve the look that you're going for. So let me know what you thought of this and if you missed the in-studio tutorial for these videos, I'll have it linked for you below.